thank you for being here. If you're a guest and you say, do you act like this all the time? This is good compared to what we normally act. It really is. Um, if you have your Bible, which I hope you do, if you don't, uh, the Bible will be on the, the big screen behind me. But today, I've got a title of this sermon. It's called Release to Increase. Release to Increase. And I really felt in my spirit this week, God said, now I want you all to hang with me because I really believe that, that this is the word for somebody in here today. Matter of fact, I already know it is because I just spoke with a young lady at the altar and I said, I dedicate this sermon over to you. I really believe God spoke into my spirit all this week and said, whatever mess you're in, I wrote this down, whatever has a hold on you, whatever has you in bondage is temporary. Let that get in your spirit. Whatever's going on in your life right now, whether it be bondage, whether it be you're in a mess or a situation or finances, I really believe the Lord spoke unto me. He said, you tell the people, they shall be released to increase. You shall be released to increase. Thus saith the Lord. I can't get that out of my heart. can't get that out of my spirit. I can't get that word away from my, my lips. Release to increase. Release to increase. Release to increase. Everybody say release to increase. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor because I want you all to act like you're convinced. Come on. Tell them, say, you are released to increase. How many of y'all believe that? Because listen, if you're looking for an emotional sermon, it's not going to work. You'll walk out that door and you'll say, well, I felt it 45 minutes ago, but something happened. Yeah. You're, and you'll be so emotional and you'll be trapped up into a circumstance and you're looking for a spiritual high. Oh. You're looking for a spiritual high. You're looking to get high on Jesus on Sunday. But then on Monday, things change. Things just go back to normal. Can I tell you, I come today by the authority of God to bust that curse up. I come today by the authority of God to tell you, you are released to increase. I am so sick and tired of the church being busted and disgusted. I am so tired of everything else growing in this world, but the churches are like a herd of turtles, and we're just barely getting by. I'm so tired of everything else growing in this world, and families are dying by the wayside. I am so tired of the devil telling me lies. What do I do, Brian? How, what do I do? You've got to believe the word. You've got to believe the word. You've got to quit believing what everybody tells you. You've got to believe the word. You've got to stand on the word. The grass shall fade. Be done away with, but the word of God, hallelujah, will stand forever. So I believe today God gave me a word just for you if you're busted and disgusted, if you're in a mess, or something's got a hold on you. I pray today that you will be released to increase. If you have your Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 15. Very unique scripture. And before I, before I read this, let me give you a backdrop. I understand that what I'm getting ready to read you was dealing with finances. But I, I want to tell you something also. God just don't own your money. God owns your situation. you got to say, you know what, God? I understand you was talking about a financial debt right here. But God now understands, if you've done that for Abraham... And if you've done that for Isaac, and if you've done that for Jacob, and I'm in the seed of Abraham, you'll do it for me too. So you've got to believe all the Bible. Amen? So Deuteronomy chapter 15, this is a word. Lord, help me preach this word. Hallelujah. Verse 1 through 4 is where we're at. Deuteronomy, Old Testament, chapter 15. It says this in verse 1. At the end of every seven years, everybody say seven years. Seven years. Thou shalt make a, this is a good word, at the end of seven years, and I feel this in my spirit right now, hallelujah, I don't know what year you're in, but number seven's coming, you shall be perfect, and you shall be complete. I don't know where you're at right now in your situation, but I come today by the authority of God in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 1. At the end of that year, at the end of that season, at the end of that time, there shall be a release. Listen to me. Let this word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if I've ever had a word for a church, I believe I've got a now word. 
I believe, Glenn, I've got a word straight from God, straight to Elkhorn Baptist Church, Church and all the surroundings right now. This is a word for you. Wherever you're at, there's going to be a release. You know why the devil, he can't hold on to God's property. The devil can't hold on too long. He's got to let go. He says these words. I love this. Verse 2. And this is the manner of the release. Listen to this. Listen to this. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release it. You say, Brian, oh my God, what happened? If you owed somebody a million dollars and you were a child of God, and you couldn't pay that debt back? At seven years, Glenn, whether we believe this stuff or not, after seven years, that lender released you because you was God's property. Wow! You may not have got that, but I got it in my soul. That means no matter where I'm at, that means Satan can only hold me for so long. And there will be a spiritual release in my life, hallelujah. Because Satan can't touch what God owns. He can't hold on to what God owns. It's a temporary thing. Y'all watch me, read my lips. Whatever you're going through is temporary. It's temporary. Does that make you want to shout like a Baptist? Does that make you want to run like a Pentecostal? Does that make you want to get up and say glory, hallelujah, like a a Pentecostal does? It does me. Watch this. He says these words. And I love this. Listen to this. He shall not exact. Listen listen to this. If it is of his neighbors or of his his brother. Because, listen to this. Why? Here's, Here's your answer. Because it is called the Lord's. Everybody say that. Because. Are are y'all okay? Because. Come on, help me. The Lord's release. The Lord's release. Let that get in your spirit. The Lord's release. The Lord's release. Whatever's got you in bondage, the Lord will release it. I hope y'all receive this word. You just don't sit there like a bunch of religious people. Of a foreigner, listen to this, that mayest exact it again. But that which is thine and thy brother's, thy hand shall what? Release. Verse 4, last verse. Save when there shall be no poor. No, it did not say that. The Bible really said that? There, what did it say? No poor. I'm telling you, the church has settled for financial barriers. The church has settled for being in slavery. The church has settled for all these things that the devil has said. The church has said, well, that's just the way it's supposed to be. No, it's not. No, it's not. And if I got to be the only one that is standing up and say, you know what? If you're in bondage, if you're in slavery, if you're down to nothing in your life, I'm telling you, that is not of God. God says, Brian, you tell them, I shall release them. Uh, God will release you. Watch what he says here. There shall be no poor among you. For the Lord, uh, I receive this, shall greatly bless thee in the land which thy Lord God giveth thee from thine inheritance and possess it. God gave Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, read it, check it out, verses 1 through 4. He gave Abraham all the land. And God says over in Colossians chapter 2 that we are the seed of. So who possesses the land? Who possesses the land? Why is the church allowing the devil to take what God has given us? I'm just asking. Because I go into churches all the time. And I preach a word like this. And here's what they'll do. I don't know. I don't know about that, preacher. You believe in prosperity? What else? I mean, do you believe in bankruptcy? Do you want to stay poor? Yes, I believe in the prosperity of Jesus Christ. I'm not poor. I'm rich. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe in prosperity. My goodness. I ain't staying broke. How about you? How many of y'all want to be broke? Can't pay your bills. Can't go to McDonald's and buy a Big Mac. 
Watch this, no hands up. But you say, bro, how many of y'all want to be prosperous? And, and watch, the, there's hands that's not up. That's why they're broke. <laughs> that's why you're broke. You say, well, Brian, do you think that money's going to fall from the sky? No. No. But I think there's got to be a truth in your mind that says, if I am able to work, I should work. But God will bless my job. God will bless my health. God will bless my children. God will bless me. I am God's child. I'm a king's kid. I ain't in my blood I'm going to win. Y'all get this? It's in my blood. My daddy owns it all. Hallelujah. And he said, if I got it, you got it. You got to receive it though. Hallelujah. Are y'all okay? Because I want y'all to get this. I want you to get this. I, I really believe what God told me to speak over you today is these words. <laughs> release to increase. I release today. It's a strong word, but I, I'm going to preach it. Because I believe God dropped it in my spirit. I really release today in the name of God and his authority that drugs shall not have you no longer. I, God, by the authority, you wrote this. We pray that the release to increase. That God just wouldn't heal you to say, except for you to sit there and go, Well, I don't smoke drugs no more. No. He gave you something called a testimony. And you should share your testimony so God will get the glory. But the only way God will get the glory is if you share the story. So you got to share what God is doing in your life. I pray today a release of alcohol, a release of pornography. I pray a release today that you're coming out and you shall not stay in. You say, Brian, you, you know something, don't you? I know this, that America <laughs> smokes more drugs. And right now, heroin is on the act right here in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Whether you realize it or not, y'all can keep denying the truth and sit back and say, oh, it's going to be okay. But I'm telling you today, we're going to the enemy's camp and we're going to take back what God gave us. It's time that the church steps it up and says, you know what? Yes, this is happening, but this is what we're going to give them. This is what we're going to give them. It's like Haywood said, why in the world do we wait till they go to jail and try to hand them a Bible? Let's get a Bible in their hands now. Let's get the Word of God in their spirit now. And, you, and watch, mamas and daddies, I'm going to tell you something. We'll square you up. Don't you dare let your children dictate if you come to church or not. You be a mama, you be a daddy, and you say, no, 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 no. We going to church today. That's right. Preach it, preach it. It's exactly right. You drag them by their ears if you have to get them here. Because here's what I know. When the anointing of God goes forward, hallelujah, it shall not come back void. I know when God gets in their soul and in their spirit, he's going to do something big. I serve a big God. He ain't no joke. Hallelujah. I pray a release over you today. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that this, these scriptures I was talking to you about is dealing with finances. But I want to read to you something spiritually about your, your spiritual debt. Your spirit. Everybody say spiritual debt. Colossians chapter 2. And I want you all to just let me read this to you. Verse 13 through 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. He says, and you. Who's he talking about? Yeah. You were dead in your trespasses, in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Listen to this. But my God made me alive with him. Listen to this. Having forgiven us all. Everybody say all. Everybody say he left nothing out. My sins paid for. Past, present, and future. Whoa, isn't that good? I have forgiven you of all, everything. He says, by canceling, watch it, by canceling the record of debt, of debt, of debt that stood against with all of its legal demands. He's canceled it all. And he set aside, listen to this, he sets you aside by nailing it to the cross. By nailing it to the cross. Now watch this. He says these words, I nailed it to the cross. 
He disarmed the rulers, the powers, and the authorities and put them to an open shame by triumphing over them by the cross. Watch this. Y'all ready? Everything's already been paid for. Whether you like it or not, how many of you know God knows what you did last night? It's not, I knew what you did last summer. He knows what you did last night. He knows what you're thinking right now. But how many of you are thankful? I mean, it's not my heart. Because sometimes I forget about God's grace. Sometimes I forget about how good God's been to me. And how far he has brought me. Sometimes we forget to praise the most powerful person in this world who one time you were lost and dying and busted and disgusted, lost and dying and going straight to the bottom of the pits of hell. But hallelujah, God intervened. God intervened. He said, no, 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 no. That one's mine. That one's mine. All of them are mine. Thus saith the Lord. And how did he do it? By nailing your sins to the cross. So here's what I want to tell you. I want to challenge you this morning. Maybe what if, Brother Bob, every time we talk about our sin and God, I'm doing this and I'm God, I'm doing that, we're, we're reminding him of the death. Now I know when we got sin in our life, we should be close enough to God that God and Holy Ghost comes in there and says, hey, 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 something's not right. But nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that we should remind God of what has already been bought. What about if you went to God and said, God, I know I'm a mess. You knew that when you died. But today, I come to you thinking you that I can still feel the Holy Ghost. I can still feel something in me that's burning like never before. And God, I've got to say thank you for, for healing me. And thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for buying me and purchasing me that I am forgiven, that I may enter to the throne room of heaven. That's a prayer right there. That's a prayer. See, we believe the Old Testament for Abraham, who was under the blood of goats and lambs. Why can't we believe what God said in the New Testament? That we are under the blood of the Lamb. How much more would God do for those who call upon the name of the Lord than those who never do? I thought about a TV show I was watching last week. It's called Cops. How many of y'all ever watched some cops? Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? I like that. That's my favorite part. What you gonna do when they come for you, bad boy, bad boy? I thought, anyway, so I was watching that last week, and something crazy happened. I've never seen this before, Mitchell. It's crazy. And I was watching, I even DVR'd it for I had to go back and make sure I seen what I actually saw. This man was running from the cops. You say, Brian, everybody does that. I know I'm not talking about that part. Anyway. He was running from the cops, and this dude ran out into the street. He, there was this man in a car. He opened the car door, grabbed this dude, threw him out, got in the driver's side of the car, and zoom, he was gone. And I said, this is going to be interesting. This cop, who was under the law, walked out. He, he said, oh, stop, stop, stop. I mean, traffic, everybody just stopped. One man stopped traffic. And all of a sudden, this cop, Ran up to the citizen in his car. He didn't say, get out. Here's what he did. He got in the passenger side of the car. This cop did. And I was sitting there going, man, I would give anything to be that citizen. I could break the law. You know what I'm saying? I could punch the gas and I could go. This cop was in the car with this citizen. And he said, go, 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 go. Follow that car. Follow that car. And no question. I mean, it was just gone. And Travis is no lie. They were zooming. I mean, jumping hills. And I mean, gunning it in and out of traffic. Red light appears. The cop said, go, 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 go. And gone. <laughs> this is the truth. And man, they, after all, it was all said and done. I said, oh my gosh. That is so good. And then the, the camera, the media got there. And I wrote this down. And I, I, this is so good. They asked the citizen who was with this police officer. They interviewed him. And they said, sir, what do you think about this high-speed chase? And what do you think about getting to break the law legally today? This citizen said, and I quote, I wrote this down, the lawman I have beside me today supersedes the law. 
the lone man that I have behind, beside me today superseded the law. And what God spoke into my spirit, and I had to just jump and leap, and I'd shout, and I'm going to try to contain myself a little bit. But here's what God said. He said, Brian, that's what I've been telling you year after year after year. I supersede the law. I supersede medicine. I supersede nature. I supersede life, everything. The God who is beside you, in you, and around you supersedes it all. Y'all got this? I want this to get in your spirit today. If you walk out depressed, it's because you like to be depressed. The man, the God man, that is in you, in me, supersedes it all. He wrote the law. He is the law. He done it all. He is the doctor. He is it all. He's my God. He supersedes at all. I'm telling you today we serve a supernatural God. Listen to me. We serve a supernatural God. I feel this in my spirit. Thus saith the Lord. This is the year. I want y'all to write this down. Somebody write this down because I believe God spoke this into my heart. This is the year of release to increase. Release to increase. Your marriages are released to increase. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through, you are released. To increase. Release to increase. This is the year of the Lord's release to increase. Hallelujah. So you say, Brian, I still don't feel it. I still don't understand. Can I tell you today, and I believe this is the truth, a man will only do what a man wants to do. A person will only do what a person wants to do. I deal with people every single day of my life. I give them godly counsel. I point them straight to the word of God. And they choose to go a different direction. Can I tell you that is called rebellion. Listen to me. A lot of you in this house today are doing what you want to do. And I'm telling you under the authority of God, if you want to be released, to increase, you must follow the manual, the Word of God. And when you start following the Word of God, I will be the first to tell you it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. There will be mornings you don't want to raise your hands and praise God. But can I tell you to raise your hands and praise God? There will be mornings, hallelujah, and there will be evenings. And man, when, when things don't go right, Lord, America takes the uppers to get up. And downers to go to sleep and everything in betweeners. But can I tell you, I don't need no pill to get happy. I got the Holy Ghost in me and I've got God in me. And God is my pill. He's my gospel. All you got to do is take a gospel. Hey, and you get the gospel in you. Maybe you'll start spilling out, running over, shaking together. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the gospel works. Works. And I'm telling you today, if some of you can sit under this kind of a teaching and this kind of a message, and you're tired and you want to go to sleep and go to bed, I'm telling you, your spirit's not right. I'm calling this junk out. To, I'm calling it out. I'm telling you the gospel truth. You know how I know God's working? Listen, speak Holy Ghost, not even a baby, and that one's praying. I'm telling you today, what God spoke into my heart, nothing can hold you long, nothing can hold you permanently. Whatever you're in right now is a temporary situation. If you're down and your finances are busted and disgusted, if you'll hang on to the manual called the B-I-B-L-E, your basic instruction before leaving earth, if you'll hold on to the Bible, it'll hold on to you. If you hold on to Jesus, he'll hold on to you. He'll get you over. He'll get you under. He'll get you around. He'll get you over your Jordan. 
But you got to hold on. You can't let go when things get bad. I remember preaching a series of sermons on healing in this church. Right out of the word. And there'd be people come up and say, I don't know, Brian. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, that's right. And you preach on prosperity. People don't like receiving it. I'm telling you the truth today. The church is set up to win the world. Listen to me. We here today are set up by the authority of God to win the world. Why in the world would God want to? How can you be broken? Win the world. Go into all the. No, just go to your house. God said go to all the world. Judea and Samaria. In all the uttermost parts of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Sunday night, I finally seen a New Testament church come to life. Here's what happened, man. Started out with like 13 or 14. Round one, ding, ding, it was good. It was on. We gave an invitation. 11 people got saved. I said 11 people got born again, got saved. On their way to heaven. Good gracious. How many of y'all remember being lost, undone, unfound, and God reached down and he saved your soul? Let me tell you something. If you can't celebrate salvation, you can't celebrate. People all the time come to me and say, well, Brian, y'all are the loudest rambunctious, the most celebrational church I've ever seen. And I'm like, sounds like church. Sounds like church. Now, I do believe there's a time to be reverent, but I also believe there's a time to celebrate. And I'm going to say this again, because I don't think some of you realize what God is doing here at this church. We have seen over 500 salvations in almost five years. Yeah. Evidently, Sunday night, 14 wasn't enough. God said, I want two more. We didn't bring our extra clothes, but we got wet again. And after that, today is proof that we're alive and well. The house is full. And what I'm begging and pleading to you today, whatever situation that you're in, Whatever you're going through, God has commissioned me today to stop by this morning and said, He releases you to increase. He releases you to increase. How many of y'all receive that today? Come on. Come on. you got to believe this. You say, Brian, you don't understand. I, I'm so far in debt. I can't do it. Hey, but my God said, I can do all things through Christ. Brian, you don't understand. My husband's acting like a heathen. No, he's acting like you, you once did. We all got dumb moments. Come on. We all act crazy. We all say things we shouldn't say. But Tommy, hey, Tommy Wilson, you're proof. 11 years, is that right? Huh? Little over 10 years working on 11. The devil used to have him all trapped up, enslaved to drugs and a pill. Getting high in the morning, high at night, and high in the noonday. But my God, today, you're high on Jesus. You ain't going back. Ten. Thank God my God's alive. I don't know where you at. I don't know where you at this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, I said hallelujah. 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 You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm in love. Oh, I'm so in love. I thought I loved Dana. And I do. <laughs> but I found a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I found a God. That would never give up on Brian Keith Rafferty. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart to all of you today. 
God loves you. God wants to release you out of that bondage. He wants to release you out of that captivity. He wants to loose you out of that slavery situation that you're in. People say all the time, we don't have slaves no more. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because a lot of you are enslaved right now to a habit. A lot of you are enslaved to something as small as your finger. you got a habit, you wake up with it, and you go to bed with it. Something as small as your finger has enslaved you. Cricket, cricket. And what God, I really believe, told me to tell Elkhorn and a guest or whatever you're at today, He wants to release you to increase. Why? I wrote this down. Last part of verse 2 in Deuteronomy 15. He said, because it is called the Lord's release. So today, wherever you're at, praise team, you guys, you come. Wherever you're at, whatever's going on in your life, I come by today to tell you, you are released. There's no drugs in hell can stop you. Y'all got me? There's no alcohol that can hold you. You say, Brian, I don't like stuff. I don't like preaching like this. I do. Because it allows me to realize where I need help. And I'm telling you today, God's after you. And I believe God spoke into my heart. He said, you tell the church that need to be like a, a post-it stamp. I know this is silly. You need to be like a postage stamp. You put a postage stamp on your mail, and it gets to its destination. And I really believe God spoke unto me and said, Brian, you tell Elkhorn they're going to be like a postage stamp. And then when I stick it to them, when I stick it to them, they're going to stay with it until they get to heaven. Like a postage stamp. So I'm telling you today, it's up to you. You are released to increase. Be like that old citizen. The man I have with me today, he superseded the law. He wasn't just the law. He went above and beyond the law. He just won't heal me in one spot. He'll heal me all over my body. I love when God healed Kurt Vaughn. Was was it your left or your right uh, lung? Right lung. Everybody would always say, Kurt, how you doing? Kurt would say, I'm blessed. And Kurt they would always say, well, I hope it don't, that old cancer never comes back. And I love when Kurt would always say, say these words. Well, it never come back to my right lung. It may try to come back everywhere else. But what I tell you, Jamie, is that when God heals your marriage, it's healed. Man, receive this, guys. Please, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, Receive what I'm telling you right now. That when God heals you and God puts it together, there's no demon in hell can stop it. There's nothing in this world that can break you up, come against you. Because greater is he that is in me than he is in the world.